Greetings, friends, and welcome to another episode of Can I Kick It? The Jetpack Joust web series where we talk about indie games, board games, and role-playing games that you can help crowdfund right now. I'm going to be honest, for the last few weeks, we had a flood of great content. There was so many great Kickstarter projects out there online, so many great games to talk about. And this week was the first time that we really struggled to put together a list that we thought was worthy of your time and attention. But we've dug up a few classics that we think you should definitely look into. So let's get started. Pixel Noir is a game that I'm a little bit biased towards because I actually got to see it in action at PAX East just a few weeks ago. There's something that's much different about actually holding a prototype in your hand on the device it's meant to be played on as opposed to watching it on the internet via some trailer that might not be totally accurate. What I can tell you is that Pixel Noir is a game that you need to be paying attention to because it really is a unique twist on the traditional JRPG. The game is a combination of three elements. You have the traditional role-playing mechanics of early Final Fantasy games, a detective story straight out of a film noir, and H.P. Lovecraft-like creatures and hallucinations that will haunt your dreams. It tells the story of a private investigator who's looking for clues as to why his career as a police officer ended 10 years ago. Due to some tragic events, a hospital was destroyed, and he was blamed for this action even though he believes it has something to do with the hallucinations that have been happening to him for the 10 years since. Along the way, players will be able to engage with an investigative mode that allows them to look specifically at certain clues to help them on the road to uncovering the mystery of this case. They'll also take part in dynamic combat sequences that are meant to be both strategic and tactical, emphasizing the elements from old school RPGs that people really love. But what really grips me about Pixel Noir is not its attention to nostalgia, but this focus on the detective story and really adding a new layer to a JRPG that you haven't seen before. The supernatural elements also help and the monster design is really fantastic. This game has been on Kickstarter for quite a while already and it's going to be closing up shop pretty soon. They haven't hit their goal yet, so I really hope you'll head over to their page and take a look because if you're interested in it, I think you should fund it. They don't have much time left and I think you could really help them bring this project to life. I love when board games combine mechanics that you wouldn't think would naturally fit together and make it feel effortless. Black Forest does just that with the card drafting of Seven Wonders, the worker placement of Lords of Waterdeep, and the betrayer aspect of a game like Resistance. Each player is given a leadership role and a certain amount of workers to help improve the town. One player gets a secret card that's a werewolf and he keeps hidden and has to attack these villagers and eliminate them to help prevent the town from expanding. The game takes place over the course of two phases. During the day phase, workers are placed and resources are collected, money is earned, and you can start to upgrade buildings within the town. During the night phase, lycanthropy hits, and the werewolf comes out and attempts to remove workers from the board. But no one can be sure exactly who's killing all of these villagers, and as such, you have to rely on drafting cards, and eventually you'll hit what's called a seer card. And the seer card allows you to look into the future and hopefully discover the identity of the werewolf. All of this can sound really complicated, but when you actually take a look at the game, it's relatively simple in design, and that's what's got me really excited. It's sort of an advanced version of Werewolf, which is this very simple board game that you can play in a party atmosphere. This is something a bit different, and it adds a new layer of worker placement that has some strategy to it, and if the town manages to grow before the Werewolf can kill all the villagers, then the rest of the players win. Black Forest manages to combine a lot of my favorite styles of games and a lot of some of the most popular styles of games. So I think it could be really popular at your table, and I hope you'll take a look at it because it's gorgeous and it looks incredibly fun. There comes a point in every game of Civilization where you hit a wall, where you can no longer go into the future because the game has created some sort of arbitrary end. This can be disappointing, just as you're starting to get really awesome mech robots and you're starting to get nukes and you're starting to do really awesome things within the game, you're stopped. Universim removes these walls and instead allows you to take a civilization from the birth of the Stone Age all the way into the stars and beyond. There are no limits placed on your future and you can go as far as you want to. Colonize every single star in the galaxy if you'd like. There is so much to do and so much freedom, and that's what's got me very excited about this game. 
The player starts the game with a small tribe who slowly begins to gather resources until they can create what's called an epicenter. And around that epicenter grows a town, and then a city, and then an entire civilization, and eventually you come to dominate the entire world. But once you've used up all of that world's resources, where do you go? You can look to the sky, pick a star, find planets, and go to that new planet and start your civilization all over again. But what makes Universim so interesting is that every single planet has a unique climate, has a unique change of seasons. And so the winter may be twice as long as it is on Earth, and therefore you have to accommodate more food, you have to make sure you're storing more for your colonists so they'll be able to survive the winter. The game also feeds off of dynamic events that could happen any time. There's 12 different viruses that could strike and wipe out entire populations. Alien craft could land on your planet and you could suddenly see a surge of technology. And none of this is pre-planned, it all just happens whenever the game decides it's going to happen. And that makes it feel as if you're really creating a living universe. Universim is already gorgeous, it already looks ready to produce, and I can only assume that this Kickstarter money is going towards polish and to maybe towards coding some of the simulation elements that are a bit more complicated and need to take more time and money and effort to get out there into the world. But regardless, if you're not excited for this game, I don't know why. They're really positioning themselves as an alternative to something like Civilization or SimCity, these sort of massive simulation games that have dominated the market for many, many years. This is something new, something fresh, and something with a lot of freedom and, and really will engage you in a lot of different ways. You can go to every single planet in the universe. How exciting is that? How awesome is that? You should definitely check it out. I'm a sucker for surrealist horror, and the last game that we're going to present to you today is a prime example of that. It's called Omori, and it's a really strange little game that I'm not entirely sure how to describe, and I'm not really sure I even know what it's about, but it looks so interesting that I can't keep my eyes off of it. Omori is a character who was developed for a blog from 2011 to 2012, and eventually given his own webcomic series developed by illustrator Omocat. Omocat has apparently always seen his creation as a video game character, and he's finally bringing him into that world with this new game. Omori is a sad and depressed young man who lives in a world known as the White Space, which is basically just a big, blank, white plane. Nothing else exists, nothing else is there, except for occasionally people will come to interact with him. His only possessions are the blank light bulb that hangs from the endless ceiling, his blanket, his bed, his laptop, and his cat. Occasionally, he receives visitors, and he has memories of old friends that he hasn't seen in some time. And this game promises to tell the story of how Omori goes back through his memories to uncover exactly how he ended up in this white space, in this empty room, with no one but himself. I started today's episode by talking about how seeing a game in person can really help improve your perspective on it, but the trailer for Omori was so great, I don't see how I could be any more blown away. It was weird, there was really cool animation that I really hope makes its way into the game, there was some strange visuals, some live action sequences, and so much of it was so eye-catching and different that I, I had to pay attention. This looks to be an interesting exploration into the mind of someone who's depressed, and having been there myself, I'm always interested to see how games reflect that concept and that mood once you're in them. So, check out Omori. I think it's an incredibly unique experience. There's nothing else out there like it, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Take a look. Well, folks, that's it for this short but sweet episode of Can I Kick It? We hope you found at least a few projects that you can get really excited about. And if you do, just click on the links below in the description bar. It'll take you right to their Kickstarter page. You'll be able to get some more in-depth information about these projects and maybe think about throwing a few bucks their way and making these games come to fruition because they're all really different and unique and exciting. And we think that Kickstarter is a great platform and crowdfunding in general is a great platforming for getting great creative ideas out into the collective brain space. Don't forget to check us out at jetpackjoust.com or on any number of social media sites. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're on YouTube. You can like this video, you can subscribe to this channel, do whatever you can. We really appreciate all your support and we will continue to bring you new indie games, new role-playing games and new board games, things to get excited about because there has never been a better time to be a gamer. Until next week, a Bill Murray. 
crazy. Get out of here. You get out of here. You get out of here. You get out of here.